I call for the immediate indictment of Michael Thomas Flynn on charges of and his immediate arrest on suspicion of violations of the Logan Act. I call for his immediate suspension, resignation, or dismissal as the National Security Advisor to the President of the United States of America. I call for the immediate investigation of whether his relationship with the Russian government is limited to activities covered by the Logan Act, or if he is acting as an agent of the Russian government, or as in the past, acting as a paid employee of companies affiliated with the Russian government. I call for Senators Graham and McCain and any remaining patriotic Americans on the Republican senatorial roster, if any there yet be, to fulfill their promise of weeks ago to immediately conduct a full, open, and limitless investigation into Russian hacking during the election, into Russian coordination with the Republican presidential campaign during the election, and into the contact between the Russians and the transition team between the time of the election and the time of the inauguration. And lastly, I call for the grand jury to not only indict Flynn for his alleged violations of the Logan Act, but also for those grand jury proceedings to include the naming of at least one unindicted co-conspirator who may have been aware of and may have colluded with Flynn's improper conduct involving the Russian government. I identify that potential unindicted co-conspirator as Donald John Trump. The specific crimes included in the Russian meddling in our presidential campaign of 2015-2016 and in the Russian interference in our presidential election of 2016 are as yet unclear. But in a series of events last week that seemed like mere individual explosions during a blitzkrieg of Trumpian evil, the outline of what has reportedly been done by Michael Flynn who is at this moment still the man officially charged with advising a reckless and seemingly mentally unstable president on all national security issues, that outline became substantially more clear. Flynn, Lieutenant General, United States Army, retired, shown here on Thursday, December 10, 2015 in Moscow, seated at a table with the Russian dictator Putin at a dinner for the Russian RT television network by whom Flynn has been paid later seen leading a standing ovation for Putin at the same event. On Wednesday, February 8, Mr. Flynn again denied that he had privately discussed U.S. sanctions against Russia with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak on December 29th while Barack Obama was still president. If proven, such discussions by Flynn could be illegal interference in stated American foreign policy under federal statutes referred to as the Logan Act. If proven, such discussions could also indicate that Flynn misled or lied to Press Secretary Spicer and Vice President Pence, both of whom issued repeated public denials on Flynn's behalf. On Thursday, February 9, Flynn's spokesman changed the general's story. Flynn now, quote, indicated that while he had no recollection of discussion sanctions, he couldn't be certain that the topic never came up, unquote. On the same day, the newspaper The Washington Post cited nine current and former holders of senior positions in U.S. agencies with access to U.S. intelligence about the Flynn Kislyak conversations, including transcripts of their phone calls. According to the paper, all nine insisted, quote, Flynn's references to the election-related sanctions were explicit. Two of the sources say further that the intelligence indicates Flynn urged Russia to delay any response to the sanctions until Trump was sworn in and could change them. On Friday, December 30, 2016, after the flynn kislyak conversations, the Russian dictator Putin said he would delay any response to the Obama sanctions. Also on Friday, December 30, 2016, the then president-elect tweeted, quote, Great move on delay by V. Putin. I always knew he was very smart. The likelihood that Trump's message to Putin, Trump's close relationship with Flynn, and Flynn's conversations with Kislyak are all coincidental, reportedly after and before the election, is so small as to be almost laughable. And if they are not coincidental, Trump had guilty knowledge of Flynn's conversations with Kislyak, and if Flynn can be indicted for violations of the Logan Act, Trump's awareness of this crime and his cover-up of it elevates him to the status of possible unindicted co-conspirator with other implications relative to presidential impeachment. On April 27, 2016, then-candidate Trump gave his first major foreign policy speech. Seated in the front row of the audience at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C., Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak. 
As of 5.30 p.m. on Friday, February 10, a White House official quoted by the Associated Press said Trump has, quote, full confidence, unquote, in Michael Thomas Flynn. The interference by a foreign power in our government, in our country, is intolerable. Collusion between a hostile foreign power and representatives of our government, or representatives of a government yet to be, risks our independent existence as a nation and renders those who commit such collusion, if not necessarily by legal definition, then in their hearts, traitors. They will be exposed, rooted out of any position of responsibility in this country, and punished to the fullest extent of the law. And that begins with the immediate indictment and arrest of Michael Thomas Flynn and the identification as unindicted co-conspirator of Donald John Trump. Resist. Peace.